and that he'll see your improved skills on the courts next summer. Another favorite American sport is football. In the fall, I wear the colors of burgundy and gold for the Washington Redskins. But my co-host here is a die-hard Pittsburgh Steelers fan. That's right, Gil. And this year, the Steelers are going all the way to the Super Bowl. But I don't think either team would be as great if it weren't for the creativity of a small college football team over a century ago. The Huddle, a closed circle of 11 team members discussing offensive strategy over a piece of pigskin. The Huddle, a tradition first learned during peewee games or scrimmages with the neighborhood kids. The Huddle, an invention and legacy from a college football team. The Huddle has played an important role in football history, but it has not always been part of the game. In the 1880s, before the creation of the huddle, quarterbacks called signals at the line of scrimmage. They would randomly tell players what the next play would be. Also during this period, football became a popular collegiate sport. To rival universities of Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Virginia, the U.S. Naval Academy in Georgetown, Gallaudet University organized its first football team in 1883. The team was successful, but there was one problem. Because Gallaudet's team was deaf and used sign language, the quarterback's strategies could easily be read by every player. Out of necessity, team members developed a technique to conceal their signals, and the huddle was born. Gallaudet captain and quarterback Paul Hubbard used this innovation on the gridiron for the first time in the autumn of 1893. Soon, other teams began to imitate Gallaudet's huddle. They claimed the noise from the crowd prevented them from hearing their own quarterback's signals. As for Gallaudet's team, the huddle brought good fortune. In the years that followed, the team won several championship banners, and the 1890s became known as the glory years of Gallaudet football. Today, the tradition continues.